perfect. We are good on my end. We're gonna wait a couple minutes, um, I think would be best. We have a lot of people that have registered for this one, and so want to give them an opportunity to jump on because I'm not seeing everybody on here yet. Um, but good morning to everyone that is already on here. We're excited to have you um, joining us for our virtual EGTI day. Um, we really wish we could be in person. Today would have been a great opportunity to be in person with the weather outside. It's a great, great day. Um, but we're glad that you are joining us here live virtually. And I know we have some um, educators that have your class on. And so we are happy to be in your classroom. And so throughout the day today, we have many different sessions. This morning, we're going to hear from Megan Stevenson. Um, she is our director here at Erskine Green Training Institute. So she's going to talk about what EGTI is. And then at 10 o'clock, I will be back on to give you a tour about EGTI. And then we have 1131 and then a, um, a one o'clock one um, and then so on this afternoon as well. So we're excited. We're going to see if any other people have joined yet. And our goal this morning um, and today throughout our virtual um, EGTI day is to, we will be recording and putting these on our YouTube channel. And so if you do have questions, want to go back and see some of this information, you will be able to do that um, via our YouTube channel. So we're excited about that opportunity. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and get started um, since we have until nine o'clock. So. I am going to turn my camera off, and if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat. I'll be answering those, or we'll have time at the end to answer any questions that you have. So I'm going to turn it on over to Megan. All right. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I want to be very cognizant of timing. The whole purpose of us doing these 30-minute sessions throughout the day is um, we feel it's easier for everybody in your different environments to focus for 30 minutes and then get on with something else. So I want to make sure that we, we stick to that. Um, as Fenway said, feel free to shoot questions in the chat box or um, email us. At the very end, I will have our email address up. So don't hesitate to email us or call us um, anytime. If you do have questions, we're happy to answer those. So this morning, I just want to give you a quick overview of what Erskine Green Training Institute is. So our name is Erskine Green Training Institute. Um, we hear that Erskine pronounced um, a variety of different ways. So it is Erskine Green Training Institute for short. We refer to ourselves as EGTI. For those who haven't been up to Muncie or down to Muncie, wherever you guys are logging in from, we are located inside of this hotel. Um, so whenever I'm talking to people offsite, I always explain um, to people to try to visualize uh, who we are, where we're at. We are a school inside of a hotel. So this is our hotel, downtown Muncie. When you enter in those front doors, the entrance to EGTI is just kind of straight ahead. Straight ahead. So we have our own class space, office space, training lab, all of that within the first floor of this hotel. So who, who are we? What type of students are coming to EGTI? So we are considered a post-secondary training program. So right now, the students who come to us have all exited the school system. Um, we, we don't care what type of paper a student left with. We have students who receive a certificate of completion. We've had students who received a diploma of some type. Some students have received their GED. We've had some students who've dropped out of high school. So um, we are not looking at or concerned about what type of classes a student took or what their GPA is. We really are looking at what are their vocational skills. Does this student have the vocational skills necessary um, to be able to learn the job that they have chosen? So students have to be out of high school. They have to at least be 18 by the time they start. 
So a student could be 17 while they are applying, um, but they, they couldn't start a program until they were at least 18 years old. Um, and then we do take out-of-state residents. I believe everybody, um, I guess I'm assuming, I might be wrong, but I think everybody who is on um, right now is, lives in Indiana, but we have had some out-of-state students. So if you happen to know somebody who lives out of state, um, they are, um, they would be uh, considered for HETI. Student demographics. So just to give you an idea of um, the, the overall demographics or the overall profile of the students that are coming to EGTI, if you look there on the right, um, you can kind of see a breakdown. So 38% of our students have been females, 62% have been males. When you look at the, that middle graph, so what percent received a certificate of completion versus what percent received a diploma um, and et cetera with those other things. So we're about half and half right now with those who had received a diploma and a certificate of completion. And then when you look down at the bottom, those are percents, the percent's just not on there. When, you're, when we are tracking disability categories, we are using Article 7 eligibility codes. Um, so within a IEP that K-12 is using, we are, we are tracking what was their primary eligibility. So that's where these numbers are pulled from. So our highest that would be intellectual disabilities, um, second would, would be an autism um, diagnosis. We opened in 2016, so we are wrapping up year five of operation right now. Um, 2021 will be year six. So, so far we have had 19 different training sessions. So that is 19 different groups of students that have come throughout these five years. And we have had 208 students. So we have 12 here right now. So those 12 are included within that 208 number. A little more about where students have come from. Um, students have come from 54 different Indiana counties. So if you look there on the right, you can see where we are located, where that red star is. So we are in Delaware County. Um, and then those green counties are where we have had students come from. So spread out a little over, um, a little all over the state of Indiana currently. And we've had two from out of state, one from Ohio, one from Illinois. application process so just like one would apply to any other type of vocational school college um, students have to apply to EGTI as well so on our website is an application students would download that application they would fill it out gather additional documentation that we need and then they would submit it um, some examples of those additional documentations would be things like letters of recommendation, criminal background check, immunization records. So specifically for students who are um, applying to a healthcare tra training program, immunization records are um, required. We're looking at copy of an IEP. So additional documentation like that is, is mailed in with the application re-review it, make sure that we have everything that we need. And if not, we communicate with the family, letting them know what's missing. And then we schedule an in-person interview and assessment. So anybody who is applying to EGTI will have to come here on site for an interview and assessment that takes approximately two hours. And the whole purpose of that interview and assessment is for our staff to really get to work one-on-one -on -one, um, with this individual to get a better idea of their skill sets. Do, do the staff feel that this applicant has the skills necessary to be able to do the job requirements um, that they are applying for? So after that interview and assessment, staff meet, um, have a conversation about what they saw, any strengths, any challenges. Do they feel like this is gonna be a good fit for this particular student? And then a letter is mailed home to that student, letting them know of their acceptance status. Um, any student who is accepted, the student and their family come up to EGTI for a day closer to move in for new student orientation. And that's just an opportunity for students to get to meet the other students that are gonna be here. We really get to get into the details of um, what their time here is gonna be like. When's move in, when's move out, 
What should you pack? What do evenings and weekends look like? So all of that type of stuff is reviewed at new student orientation where accepted students um, come for the day. Where do students live when they come to EGTI? So the majority of our students live on site. There is an option to be a commuter if you live within 60 miles of the hotel. We have had a few commuters during our time. So we have what I think I said, 208 students. Um, I would say approximately five have been commuters. So the majority of our students are living on site here at the hotel. So remember, EGTI is inside of a hotel. So our students are living in one of the hotel rooms located on floors two through six. Students get to select if they want their own room or if they want a roommate. So that is a, a checkbox that they are filling out on the application packet. Um, so they're, they get their own TV in their room. There's a little refrigerator, a little microwave. They all have their own bathrooms in their room. So it is, I think most people have stayed in the hotel. So nicer than some of the dorms that I know some of us on this call probably, um, probably stayed in back in the day. Since students are living on site, we do have staff here 24 seven. So that's always a big question um, that we get from parents. What does staffing look like in the evenings and weekends? We always have two community living support staff here in the evenings and on the weekends. If you happen to be registered for the call this, I think it's at one o'clock this afternoon with our grads and part-time staff, you'll get to meet some of our part-time staff and our students. And so you'll get a feel for what that looks like. But we always have two staff here in the evenings and weekends, and there's always one person here overnight hours. So should students need support with things like um, doing their laundry or they need to go to CVS to pick up medication refills or maybe they want to run to Target or Walmart to grab some snacks for their room. Um, they want to go see a movie. They want to get out in the community and they don't know what bus to ride to get there. Our staff are here to support with those general things. Um, I always want to also make it clear though that it's not one-on-one -on -one support. So our students don't have one-on-one -on -one supervision 24-7. So for example, we have 12 students here right now. Um, we have two, two staff for those 12 students. So students are expected to be able to be unsupervised for periods of time um, because staff might be supporting other students or they might be out in the community with other students. And then we do have a part-time nurse who comes for consultation purposes. So this nurse works at IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital. She comes here once a day, once a week, um, excuse me, and she will do a med check. So once a week, she will come, she will do rounds to all of the students' rooms and check their medications to get a feel for, are they taking them, or are they not taking them? She sends us a report and lets us know who we need to follow up on, who we need to communicate with parents about. So that's one big thing for the students that are listening in on this call, um, or for teachers or parents who are supporting individuals. Medications is a, is a big thing for students who attend EGTI. We do not supervise these every day. So having independence in your medication management is something that really needs to be worked on prior to coming to something like EGTI. And then of course, our, our nurse is available for any other thing that may come up. You know, we've had students get hurt or students who get sick, other things that we need her to pop over to take a look at the student to provide some guidance on maybe what needs to be done. So she also is available for consultation aside from that one med check a week. Free recs. So on our website, under, there's, we have a tab at the top um, and under housing, you will see this PDF document, pre -rec. So again, to teachers, parents, job coaches, um, whoever is supporting individuals, this would be a good document to look at just to be focused a little more on maybe some skills that need to be worked on with students. So we don't say our students need all of these skills in order to be considered for EGTI, but this is a pretty good indicator of some skills we would like our students to have to be more independent overall. So the medication thing is on there and I kind of just talked about that. We do not oversee daily med take. So a student would 
either need to be on meds that it's not that big of a deal if they miss it every now and again, or if their medications are really important for their overall functioning, then that's something that needs to be worked on right now. Um, activities of daily living. We do not go into rooms and support students taking showers and getting dressed and brushing their teeth. Um, they have to already be able to do that. Now, do we have to talk with students about maybe the frequency of their showering or maybe the, um, the way in which that they're combing their hair or their frequency of doing laundry, that hygiene um, skill that, yes, is definitely something that we have to talk about. But students are able to do it. It's more of a functional skill thing that we're having to work on. Um, personal safety, such as stranger interactions, it's something we work on a lot. Pedestrian skills, dining etiquette is big here. So think about getting breakfast, getting lunch, getting dinner. We, again, we aren't providing one-on-one -on -one support. So can a student go up to a host um, and provide a host with information to be seated? Can a student talk to a cashier? So a lot of times our students are eating on Ball State's campus where it's more of a cafeteria type style. Um, can they talk to somebody and communicate their order? Can they pay? Do they know how to tip? So the dining etiquette is a big, big piece. So this is just worth looking at to identify, um, you know, for a lot of teachers, I know when I was teaching in the school system, we did a lot of community-based instruction um, or goal development for students who um, have transition IPs or waiver services that have to have goals. These prereqs would just be a good, good thing to look at just to maybe identify some skills that certain students um, need to be practicing on. Our training programs are either 10 or 13 weeks long. Now we call them training programs. Sometimes I will say when I'm in a conversation like this, I will say, think about a major. So when I went to college, I was choosing one major based on my skill set and based on my interest. I didn't go to college and choose 10 different majors. Same with these training programs. These training programs, students are selecting one based on their interest and based on their skill set. So we have nine different training programs that students can select from. We have some healthcare training programs. We have some hotel training programs, and we have some restaurant training programs. For the healthcare training programs, students are still living here at the hotel. They still are spending their evenings and weekends here at the hotel, but during the day, they are riding the, the public bus system, which is called MITS. They're riding that over to IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital, where they train for the day, and then they return back here to the hotel when their training day is over. The hotel, they are obviously training here on site at the hotel. Um, the restaurant, we have a restaurant inside of our hotel. So that's where the restaurant students are doing a bulk of their training. But we also have a relationship with another restaurant on Ball State campus where they will also do training there as well. Um, so again, they still are spending their evenings and weekends here, but then they catch a bus, go train on a different site for the day, and then they return here. Now, some of these um, programs, jobs, there's just a little more meat that we have to train. So that's why some of them are 13 weeks long. So you look at, um, let's see here, patient transport, front desk agent, kitchen cook, and heart of the house. Those are four that are 13 week programs. All of the others, the other five are 10 week programs. When we look at these, some of us can look at this job and we know exactly what it, what it is. So a kitchen cook, Okay, I think most of us probably have a good idea of some of the skills that are probably required for a kitchen cook. But there are some other um, terms on here that we are using because that's what the hospital is using. And you might be like, okay, what exactly is that job? What would they have to do in that job? For an example, patient transport is one that we often hear um, is misunderstood. So we hear something like, oh, well, you know, Sarah worked at a, an assisted living facility and she would push some of the um, residents in their wheelchair to, to the dining hall or maybe to their little activity um, session. And so they think because they pushed a wheelchair that then that's the same as patient transport. And it's, it's not. So our patient transport at the hospital, it's, there's a lot involved in it. So you are pushing 
hospital beds for patients who maybe are going to dialysis, they have to stay in their hospital bed. Other, other patients who are maybe going to an x-ray or another type of um, lab, they have to be tr uh, transferred from their bed to a, a, a stretcher. So then you are physically moving the patient from a hospital bed to a stretcher. So there's a, a big physical component to that. Patient transporters have to get medical charts and they are looking at, um, they are looking at oxygen level to, to determine if a respiratory therapist has to come. So there's a lot to it. So on our website, on our website, we have videos of all of those training programs. So we would recommend that you spend time watching these different videos with your students, the different consumers that you're working with um, to help them gain a better idea and you of the job so you can maybe better direct students into a, a program that may be a better fit or helping students identify maybe what they would or wouldn't be interested in. So all of those are on our website. Career sampling session. So we have students who leave high school and they have, they've had a lot of volunteer work experience. They know what they're good at. They know what they're not so good at. They know what they like, what they don't like. Um, we have other students who just haven't had that level of experience. And so they don't know what they're interested in. So we have career sampling sessions where students get to sample the different jobs that we have to offer. So Pre-COVID, these were two days. They spent one day at the hotel and the restaurant, one day at the hospital. Um, due to COVID right now, we are not, our students are allowed to be in the hospital, but we are not able to do these extra things like the career sampling session. So right now we are still doing career sampling sessions, but they are one day only, and we are only doing the hotel and the restaurant jobs. Um, you know, we do not know when that restriction will be lifted at the hospital. Um, but as soon as we are able to get into the hospital, we'll start doing two days again. But this is an opportunity for students to get to sample then the, the hotel and the restaurant jobs to see if there's any that are of interest to them. Dates for these, we have come, one coming up in November and two in December. So you can see those two dates and register on our website. Training session structure. So we have four sessions a year. Um, we are offering the training programs twice a year, so we rotate. We offer the 13-week programs, then the 10-week, then the 13-week again, and then the 10-week. Um, so we are getting a new group of students each session. We would never take more than 20 at a time. So um, we are looking at 20 students max per one of those sessions. Students are in training Monday through Friday, for the most part, 8 to 3.30, but that changes. Like I know right now, hospital students are getting to work at 7 a.m. and then they end their day a little earlier. Um, some of our students, like our front desk agents, when they get to a part in their training, they will have to work night shifts because there's different things that happen at a hotel in the evening that don't happen during the day. So I say generally it's during the day, but there are some shifts um, where they will work different hours depending on what the instructors are wanting them to get some practice with. Most of all of the training is done on the job. Friday afternoons they meet in the class to work on some some skills but for the most part students are all separated out on the job doing their training. For students who are living here on site we have to get a quick overview of what students independent skills look like when accessing the community. Again, we only have two staff. So if we have 12 students and they're all wanting to go different places, we have to figure out who can go alone and who needs support to go. And so we have a community access checklist that's in levels one, two, and three. Depending on where students' skills are, that lets us know what level they are on. So level one, we're really looking at stranger awareness skills. So we do a lot of practicing, a lot of assessing. If we feel like a student has these set of skills that we feel they need, they'll be checked off on level one. We then look at level two skills. So this is accessing locations downtown Muncie. Um, what are their pedestrian skills like? Navigation, how do they do with tipping at a restaurant if they're by themselves? So we do a lot of teaching and assessing around here. And if they get those skills, we'll check them off on level two. And then lastly is mastering the bus system. So do they know how to identify what route to take, what side of the street to stand on, um, how to notify the driver that they went off? 
they'll go through a bus assessment. If they pass that, they'll check off on level three. So all of our students are typically at different levels at different parts of times, just due to the pace at which they learn. Um, and these levels let our staff know what type of support they need when accessing the community. Evenings and weekends are big here. So students get to choose what they want to do. And sometimes that, that the level of independence and that ability like, oh my gosh, there's so much to choose from. I don't know what to choose. Well, that's why we have part-time staff to help with that. So, hey guys, this activity is going on tonight. Does anyone, anybody wanna to go to it? Um, and they can help facilitate those types of activities. But ultimately the student gets to say whether or not they do or don't want to do it. We have one fitness mentor activity a week and one community mentor activity a week. So these are scheduled activities that students can um, choose to participate in. Um, and so maybe going over to the YMCA to play racquetball or basketball or workout, or students all get free memberships to the YMCA, which is right beside the hotel, um, or going out into um, the community. So this past on Halloween, there was some Halloween play going on um, outdoors. And so we know we had a group of students that went to that $2 burger night at Brothers, which is on Ball State's campus. Students like to go to that. So we always have that one, fitness activity scheduled in one community activity scheduled a week. And then aside from that, students can go out and about whenever they want, but there is two scheduled activities per week. And then all of our students get meal plans while they are here. So they get a meal card, looks just like the one on your screen. I know it's hard to see because it's white. Sometimes they're blue. And that card works at about 25 approved restaurants. And so they swipe it just like they would a regular debit card. We have control over where those cards work. So if they try to swipe it at movies or at Target, the card is declined. So it only works at those approved restaurants. Certification. So students who um, are in our kitchen cook training program go through Serve Safe. Um, we have a few training programs that go through some training material through the American Hotel and Lodging Association. If they pass that assessment, they will get a, a, certi a certification sent to them through the American Hotel and Lodging Association. And our patient transporters go over to the YMCA to um, get CPR certified. I'm trying to go quickly. Program funding. So the tuition and all the program costs is on our website. So you can look at that on our website. Um, there are a few different ways we have had students pay for this. Scholarships is one option. So right now, um, we have a chunk of money that can be used in students living in Northeast Indiana. So if you live in one of, I think, nine or 11 Northeast Indiana counties, we have scholarship dollars that can be used for you. We have had students who private pay, they've had money saved up um, and they just use that money that they have saved up. We have a lot of students who are um, consumers of vocational rehabilitation and if their employment goals align with the training program here, that is a conversation that they would have with their VR counselor determine if this training would fit into their IPE. We've had a handful of students use an ABLE account. So we don't take $529, but $529 can be transferred into an ABLE account and then an ABLE account can be used for vocational training. And then a trust account can be used. So if a student has a trust in their name where there is money being saved for them, that could be used as well. So the completion of training. So we have an exit meeting here with the student's team um, talking about strengths, challenges during their, their time here. What's our plan moving forward? What type of environment may they wanna look at for employment? And then when students move home, oftentimes they are working with a job coach and that job coach is the one who's back in their hometown supporting the long-term vocational support. So helping with job placement, helping with additional on the job um, support that they may need. We do do follow-up surveys. So we do eight and 18 month follow-up surveys. So that is our, our data right now. 78% um, are employed at eight months and 79% are employed at 18 months. We are on social media. So find us on there for updated information. Um, we are posting all the time. So you can kind of get an idea of what is going on if you follow us on there. 
And then any questions, I know we're about to get kicked off, but you can email us at info at egti.org. If you do have any questions, we are more than happy to, to schedule a phone call with you or answer any questions via email. Thank you guys for so much, so much for joining. I know we will be back on here, I think at 10 o'clock, right, Fenway? Yes, we will be on okay. here at 10 o'clock for a tour of EGTI and also our hotel area. So um, we awesome. All right. Thank you.